with the departing of Frodo and Sam towards Mordor, the Fellowship of the Ring was broken. The leader of the company, Gandalf, appears to have been killed in the mines of Moria. Boromir lay slain by the Urukai, who captured Pippin and Merry, forcing Aragorn, Legolas and Gimli to give a fierce pursuit that brought them to the Riddermark realm of the Horse Lords. However, from this desperation, a new purpose for the Fellowship will be discovered, as Rohan needed help. Welcome to the new video in our series on the War of the Ring, as we talk about the beginning of the war in Rohan and the battles of the Fords of Isen. And whether you need to slice the One Ring off the Dark Lord, or just get some vegetables ready for dinner, you'd better have the sharpest knives around from our sponsor, Kamikoto. Kamikoto's kitchen knives use a single bevel edge to achieve unbelievable sharpness, more than other knife designs can handle, and you can keep it that way with one of Kamikoto's sharpening whetstones. They're made using 800 years of traditional techniques, employing exclusively high-quality Japanese steel and a stunning satin finish delivered in a beautiful heavy-duty ash wood box, ideal for presenting as a gift. All knives in Kamikoto's range are individually inspected after a several-year-long production process, and they're so confident in the result that they offer a lifetime guarantee. Kamikoto knives are used by several chefs working at Michelin star restaurants. We might not be that good, but we can see why. The blades they sent us were perfectly balanced, easy and comfortable to use, and cut through everything we ever wanted. Get these blades with a discount by going to kamikoto.com slash wizardsandwarriors and using our code wizardsandwarriors. That will give you 50 US dollars off any purchase that you make. Following the fierce confrontation between Gandalf and the Balrog of Morgoth at the bridge of Khazad Dûm, they both fell into the depths of the mountain. Gandalf was burned by the flaming entity on this long fall, before plunging into an icy cold lake which almost stilled him, but he continued the fight. Weakened by the ice-cold water, the Balrog flared up the endless stair before arriving upon the highest point in Durin's tower where the final fight happened. The fighting was brutal, but Gandalf drew upon his last ounce of strength and struck down his enemy, finally bringing an end to the hateful legacy of Morgoth, master of Sauron, and the greatest of all evil. The battle had taken ten days, and Gandalf lay broken upon the rocks, his life force slowly fading away following the duel. His body eventually gave in to the weight of time and the immensity of his wounds, yet his spirit did not perish. He was the Estari sent to Middle-earth by the creator of the world, and his mission was deemed to be incomplete in the face of the rising tides of darkness in the Third Age. So he was returned to Middle-earth with far greater strength than he had upon his initial landing in Middle-earth. Gandalf was later found by the Lord of the Eagles, Gwaihir, and brought to Lothlorien, where the remainder of his wounds were healed in their entirety. The elves bestowed upon him new robes of white, signifying that in the face of the betrayal of Saruman, he was now chief among the Astari. Armed with a new staff of immense power, Gandalf the White set out to turn the tide of the War of the Ring. In the meantime, Frodo and Sam, having been lost in the crags of the Emin Muil for some time, were ambushed by the former wielder of the Ring, Gollum. They defeated the broken shell of a hobbit, but despite Sam's urging, Frodo refused to kill the deranged being, the pity which had stayed Bilbo's hand years earlier guiding him. Instead, Gollum was forced to swear an oath on the ring to serve its master, Frodo, and act as a guide for the two hobbits. With his guidance, they soon reached the location of the Great Battle of Dagolad, fought during the War of the Last Alliance. This area, now known as the Dead Marshes, was disorienting, and without Gollum finding a hidden path, they would not have been able to cross the swamps. Yet even here, the Eye of Sauron was keen as ever, with the Lord of Nazgul flying overhead upon a fell beast searching for the ring. Meanwhile, Aragorn, Gimli and Legolas made their way to Rohan, once a realm of honour, now altered fundamentally due to the treachery of Saruman, its military unrecognisable to Aragorn who had served with it decades before. 
King Theoden, who had shown such promise at a young age, had grown old and weary, as by the time of the War of the Ring he had reigned for forty years. Unbeknownst to the noble king, his chief counsellor, a native of Rohan, Grima, who soon was to be nicknamed Wormtongue, was in the employ of Saruman, and was slowly poisoning Theoden's food, slowly corrupting his mind and weakening both the king and the kingdom. His strategic advice of constant retreat left the countryside defenseless. The king himself was kept in the palace, leaving the protection of the realm in the hands of Theoden's son, Theodred, and his nephew, Eomer. Saruman recognized the need to remove this last bastion of heroism and valor in Rohan, and soon set in motion his plan to destroy the Rohirrim. The defenders of the realm knew that they had to keep the crossings over the river Isen in order to prevent the unification of the enemy forces. The crossing point on the river Isen was crucial, as it was the only such point at which a large army could cross, and Saruman had already managed to sneak a small force across to gain a foothold. Theodred learned of this and secretly moved the troops directly under his command to get rid of that threat. On February 23, 3019 of the Third Age, the Riders of Rohan scored an easy victory here, destroying the enemy unit. In the aftermath, Theodred initially displayed the tactical acumen of his ancestor Eol, and decided to defend the crossings against any future incursions. However, soon the young prince heard of a great force gathering in Isengard. On the 24th of February, attempting to preempt this massive force assaulting Rohan, Theodred left three companies of cavalry to guard the ford, taking with him eight companies of cavalry and a company of bowmen to meet the forces of the wizard. Unfortunately for him, Saruman had already amassed his forces and was able to send a detachment to the west to lie in wait for the force of Rohan. Theodred unwittingly walked into the trap laid for him. Initially, his horsemen crushed a force of orcs 20 miles north of the fords, but with that, the prince dashed headlong into the main Isengard host. The riders of Rohan still had a chance to win this engagement, but soon they were attacked by the ambushing force. Their flank lost cohesion and they suffered many casualties. Seeing his position was untenable, Theodred ordered a retreat to the fords with the orcs and Urukai in fierce pursuit. Here, Grimbold was given command of the troops on the western side of the river, with Theodred forming up on a small hilly islet in the center of the fords in order to cover Grimbold should he be forced to retreat. But Isengard had another army on the eastern side of the Isen, and a flanking force of wargs and two battalions of orcs attacked the Rohirrim here, forcing the riders to flee south along the river, being chased by the orcs the entire time. The remainder of the orcs on the eastern bank, alongside a large number of Dunlending raiders, then crashed into Theodred's rear, while Grimbold's forces were simultaneously attacked on the western bank. Surrounded and outnumbered, Theodred cried for help, exclaiming, To me, Eolengus! His call was answered by Grimbold, who led a small contingent towards the hill to save his liege. Grimbold, however, would arrive too late, only to see Theodred mortally wounded by an orc, who Grimbold in his fury struck down. The de facto leader of the Rohirrim now found himself in the same position as the son of the king, surrounded and likely to be slaughtered at any given moment. That is, until a horn was sounded on the eastern bank with the rising of the sun. Another distinguished captain of Rohan, Elfhelm, led four companies of cavalry from Edoras and surprised Saruman's forces, who were blinded by the burning light of the sun, always dangerous for the orcs. Isengard's soldiers believed they had been attacked by a far greater host, with many fleeing. Two companies were sent to slaughter the fleeing orcs, while Elfhelm led the remainder of his forces to relieve Grimbold on the hill, thundering into the Dunlendings, who threatened to overwhelm the beleaguered defenders. The Dunlendings were slaughtered to a man, and Elfhelm arrived just in time to prevent Grimbold's death at the hands of a Dunlending pike. Unfortunately, Theodred lay dying and the two captains of Rohan knelt beside him as he gave his final words before dying moments later, Let me lie here to protect the fords until Eomer arrives. Theodred's body was buried where he fell so he could guard the fords in perpetuity. 
while his death made Eomer the heir to the throne of Rohan. Still, Isengard had more than enough forces to threaten Rohan. After the first Battle of Isen, the command of the forces garrisoned there was given to Urkenbrand of the Westfold. However, until such time as he would arrive from Helm's Deep, command was shared between Elfhelm and Grimbold. Urkenbrand, a warrior of high esteem, who had previously retired from service but returned to his post seeing the threat posed to Rohan, left a force of a thousand warriors to guard Helm's Deep and ordered a general retreat of the populace to the fortress before heading out to assume his command. While he was on his way, Grimbold was still leading the force at Isen. He stationed his foot soldiers at the ford, and the remainder of his men with Elfhelm on the eastern bank, where he assumed the attack would come. The force sent by Saruman was comparatively small, but still far outnumbered the Rohirrim garrisons there. In early March, the wizard soldiers attacked, forcing Grimbold to retreat across the ford with heavy casualties. Rohan's infantry, helmed by its leader, made their last stand here, assuming aid would come from Elfhelm. However, war riders had made their way through the gap in the two flanks and threatened to surround Elfhelm's force. Elfhelm, aware of the danger posed to Grimbold, still sounded the retreat in the face of inevitable encirclement. Seeing the torches on the other bank, Grimbold now knew the full might of Isengard was set to bear down upon his position. He also retreated back to his camp, where a shield wall was formed. The forces of Isengard broke upon this redoubt time and again, yet the captain of Rohan knew he could not maintain this line indefinitely. Forming two groups of riders, he sent them to simultaneously attack both the north and south enemy flanks, and in the ensuing confusion, his troops were able to flee the battlefield and join up with the remnants of the army now commanded by Urkenbrand. While the army was saved by the brave conduct of Grimbold, Rohan now lay open for invasion and Saruman's plan had barely been delayed. The army of Urkenbrand was still in the field, but it wasn't capable of stopping Isengard's advance and Rohirrim slowly dispersed around the countryside. While these battles were raging, Eomer and his Ered, which was a company of 120 riders of Rohan, had been tracking down a company of uruk and Orcs who had been carrying Merry and Pippin to Isengard. The mounted Rohirrim were fast, and the fact that there was no unity among the enemy forces helped them gain ground. Indeed, the group about to be attacked by Eomer consisted of Saruman's uruk and a mixed group of Orcs from Moria and Mordor, led by Grishnak. These factions had their own disagreements, as Morian orcs wanted to kill the hobbits to avenge their brethren killed by the Fellowship, while the leader of the uruk Ugluk, had orders to bring them to Saruman. At the same time, Grishnak suspected that Ugluk's prisoners were connected to the ring and was eager to bring them to his master in Mordor. At this point, the orcs stopped and started arguing on their course of action allowing Eomer's scout to notice them and gallop to his commander to bring the news. The argument the enemy was having ended in the only way it could have, and Ugluk killed some of the orcs to show how serious he was about fulfilling his master's orders. The orcs and uruk would have probably continued fighting amongst themselves, but they noticed the approaching Rohan horsemen and decided that it was time to flee. Their best hope was to enter the nearby forest which they hoped would negate the speed of the Rohirrim. Eomer was outnumbered two to one, but his troops were clearly superior. To not allow the orcs to escape, the horsemen hemmed the enemy in along the river Entwash and started pushing them northwest. The orcs, already tired from their long trek, started to slow down as the pursuit continued. The stragglers were shot by the Rohirrim arrows, as the horsemen moved in to kill and then retreated to avoid the orcish bows. Finally, Ugluk's creatures reached a small hill outside the forest of Fangorn, which they encamped on. Eomer didn't attack immediately, probably not wanting to lose any of his men, but still surrounded the orcs on three sides. Not really fond of the forests, the orcs were not eager to enter Fangorn, but Ugluk still sent a few to scout ahead. None of them returned and Ugluk decided to abandon his initial idea. 
Hoping that the hobbits could be used as hostages, he loudly ordered his orcs to kill them if the Rohirrim attempted to attack. Eomer sent in a few of his scouts, who crawled into the orcish camp, killing a few and then disappearing. This distracted Ugluk, and his rival Grishnak used that to try and escape with the hobbits. However, he was discovered by a rider of Rohan and killed. The whole commotion in the orcish camp made the Rohirrim close in a little bit, and it was then that a new unit of Urukai entered the fray. Mauhur was leading one of the scouting parties sent by Saruman to find Ugluk and assist him, but he would ultimately fail, as Eomer sent in his reserve, whose charge easily scattered the Urukai. At dawn, the Rohirrim finally attacked the enemies on the hill, and Ugluk's soldiers shot the last of their arrows, killing a few. Ugluk amassed his best warriors and attempted to break out of the encirclement. Initially, his counterattack worked, and more riders were killed. But soon, Eomer approached the leader of the Urukai, dismounted, and started dueling him, soon slaying the killer of Boromir. The last few orcs who attempted to flee were slaughtered. In the confusion of the battle, the two hobbits had escaped into the forest, and here they were met by the chief of the Ents, Treebeard, and Gandalf the White, who let them accompany Treebeard to the Entmoot, which would decide whether they would fight in the war to come. Outside of the forest, Eomer met with Aragorn's group the next day, and provided them with two horses, before returning to Edoras, where he recounted his meeting with the ranger, the elf, and the dwarf. For failing to capture and bring these fugitives to Edoras, he was beaten and imprisoned. Left disheartened, and believing the hobbits to be dead, Legolas and Gimli were despondent, a stark contrast to Aragorn, whose superior tracking skills led him to believe that the hobbits yet lived. The three entered the forest, but instead of the hobbits, they found the newly resurrected Gandalf. The wizard knew that he needed to help Rohan in this war if the forces of good hoped to win. So, summoning the greatest of all horses in Middle-earth, Shadowfax, and with all haste, the four of them made their way to Edoras. Arriving at the Great Hall and seeing a defeated people, Gandalf realized that Theoden was being corrupted. He deposed the king's advisor Grima, casting him out of the city, freeing Eomer and healing the effects of the poison on Theoden. Gandalf then asked the king to ride out against Saruman and meet him in the field. However, Theoden's old age had made him a cautious man, and he opted to lead his people to Helm's Deep where he believed they could withstand the coming tide. Gandalf, knowing this might not suffice, bade the company farewell, telling Aragorn, Look to my coming at first light on the fifth day, at dawn look to the east. He then rode off to find Erkenbrand's force, which had been scattered after the battles of the Isen. With Saruman's forces amassing to attack the Rohirrim and put an end to the nation, the stage was now set for the decisive battle at Helm's Deep. Our episode on that battle is on its way, so don't be a Saruman and press that subscribe button and then that bell button. We're planning to cover the battles of many other fantasy, sci-fi and space opera universes too. Please consider liking and sharing as it helps immensely and don't forget to comment. We'll try to read and respond to every comment as we want to know what you think about this video and which videos you hope to see in the future. This is the Wizards and Warriors channel and we'll catch you on the next one.